enclosed in our own uh, perspective, in our own place, in our own world. And therefore, it's leaving one security to reach out to the farthest, the darkest, and the lowest sectors of humanity. Uh, in the Peña Francis uh, Parish in Naga City, in front of the, the church, there is a place called Isla. I'm, I'm not sure if you've been to that place in Naga at the Old Shrine. Uh, in front of the Old Shrine, there is a sector of, there's a place where there are many illegal settlers. And there is a lot of drug dealing activities happening just in front of the church. In fact, the queen of the drug pushers was caught in the patch of the Peña Francis Shrine, selling drugs by the Pidea. So at one point, I was scared to go to that place because the police said that they did not put any CCTV in that area, but there were there are many CCTVs around the area, so probably the drug syndicates, they have placed uh, CCTVs there to know who are going in and coming out, or coming in and going out in the place. But one day, I had to celebrate Mass there, so I went to this place called Isla, in front of the Peña Francis Shrine. And I saw the situation really of the people. And just to give you a background, because one day a boy was caught stealing steel bars at this Catholic cemetery behind the old shrine of Peña Francia. So he was brought to my attention. I wanted to take him to the SWD. But then he started to narrate his story because his father was a drug pusher and he was caught by Pidea and he, he was in prison. His mother abandoned him and left him to his Lola. And so he was staying there by himself and to survive because he was hungry most of the time. He had to steal. And on many occasions, he stole uh, mga bakal ba sa cementerio ng Peña Francia para ipakbili, para meron siyang kakain. I understood. And at that point, instead of sending him to the SW today, I asked the Good Shepherd Sisters, uh, who are in my parish to take care of him. And last year, before I left the parish, I had to preside the graduation ceremony of the public school. And I saw the boy. He was about to finish grade 6 at 16 years old. So, for me, this is uh, an important reminder that on many occasions, as a priest, I am invited to reach out to the people at the farthest, darkest, and lowest sectors, even of our own parish. Let's go now to the next point, which is important in mission agendas, and it is the church as a living instrument of mission. Agenda says that the bigger church is missionary by her very nature. And this is the of quoted section of Agentes too. But Agentes describe the church in the language of being and not in terms of ex external, hierarchical, and juridical elements. So in this sense, the church is referred to not so much as an institution but as God's people on a journey towards the fullness of life. So I believe that this section of Agentes has been very much influenced by Lumen Gentium, the constitution of the church of the Second Vatican Council, in describing the church, the churches as a mystery, but also as a people of God. Now, with this understanding, what are the implications of mission to the life of the church? The first implication is that mission is constitutive of the church's being. We cannot speak of the church without speaking of mission. Second implication, mission comes before the church 
and not vice versa. Which comes first? Destruction. On many occasions, I talk to parishioners uh, and then uh, some parishioners say, the church comes first before mission. But in reality, mission agendas, the Vatican II's document says that mission comes first before the church. After the mission of the Son, sent by the Father and the Holy Spirit. So, therefore, without mission, according to agendas, the church ceases to exist. This is an implication indicated by agendas. Now, Pope Francis, again, on June 5th this year, speaking to the National Mission Directors of the Pontifical Mission Society, said something very important in relation to the missionary dimension of the church. The Pope said, A church that is reduced to pursuing efficiency of a party apparatus at all costs is already dead. I will repeat this, which is for me also very important. A church that is reduced to pursuing efficiency of a party apparatus at all costs is already dead. So the Pope is trying to say that we cannot reduce the church to management and administration. To efficiency alone. And on one occasion, Pope Benedict said, we cannot stifle the work of the Holy Spirit by putting everything in the straight jacket of pastoral plan. We have to allow, and in Evangelic Gaudium, the Pope says something beautiful. We have to allow divine creativity of the Spirit. In relation to what Pope Benedict was saying, we cannot put everything in the straight jacket of pastoral plan. Planning is important, but the real plan is God's plan. So I think uh, this is indicated even by the Pope. A church that is reduced to pursuing efficiency of a party apparatus at all costs is already there. Another implication when we talk about the church as missionary is that mission is for all Christians. All Christians are missionaries. We know this. And also mission is the basic attitude of the church wherever it is. The mission is the heart and soul of all forms of pastoral care or activity. In fact, in Redemptorist mission, reference to agendas, John Paul II, St. John Paul II said that there are three missionary situations. First is the first proclamation, where we proclaim the gospel to people who have not heard of Christ yet. The second is pastoral activity, pastoral care the ongoing care of the soul, once they have been uh, constituted as a church, we cannot neglect this missionary dimension of the church. And we call this pastoral care, pastoral activity. And of course, we have also uh, catechesis. It's an important uh, dimension or element of mission. Therefore, <coughs> excuse me. Therefore, we can say, and catechesis would mean new evangelization, that would be part of uh, the missionary situation described by Redemptorist mission. So, Agendas highlights, therefore, that mission can be in the form of pastoral activity, but it cannot be reduced to pastoral work in the parish. Mission, I will repeat that, can be in the form of pastoral activity, but it cannot be reduced to pastoral work in the parish. So mission agenda later on when it speaks about the diocesan priests, it says something that's very important. It says that everything that we do in the parish should have a missionary motivation. From celebrating funeral masses to administering other sacraments to meeting the different mandated religious organizations like Adoration Nocturna, Apostoladas, and many others in the parish. Every encounter should have that missionary motivation on the part of a priest. Another important indication to the life of the church when you talk about mission agendas is that mission can be realized 
through various forms like evangelization, ministry, ecumenism, interreligious dialogue, human promotion and liberation, eco-justice and enculturation. For example, in this year we are celebrating in the church the year of the poor in the Philippines. That is an expression of the liberating mission of the church as indicated by agendas. Now let's go to the next point. Well, how does agendas look at the life of a missionary? Let's look into the agents of mission according to agendas. Agendas indicates that all baptized Christians are agents of mission to the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit as the principal agent of mission. It's very hard to understand on many occasions the Holy Spirit. No? As a young priest, I was assigned to a remote parish in the Archdiocese of Cáceres near Mount Isaro in Bicol. The place is called Chera Nevada. Ganda, Chera Nevada. Ang barangay ay Tinampa, Camarines Sur. So, Chera Nevada, Tinampa, Camarines Sur. I was assigned sa parish na yun, and when I got there, sabi ng Archbishop Tigaspi, Father, uh, kailangan ihanda yung pari ay yung community para maging isang parish. Napakalayo po nun, uh, in the sense na pagpupunta ka ng panahon, motorcycle lang pwede pumunta. Mabato. Pagdating ko po doon, unang meeting, dalawang matanda at tatlong aso ang pumunta. So sabi ko, sabi ng nanay ko, ano, ano bang kasalanan mo sa office? <laughs> Bakit kayo pinadala sa lugar na yan? Anyway, I was a, I was a young person. Pagdating ko po doon, sabi ng Archbishop Legaspi sa akin ay, Father Andrew, baka pwede natin gawing Holy Spirit Parish, ang parish ng Chira ni Bada Tinampa. So ako po ay nagbisita sa mga bahay, sampung barangay, at lalakarin mo siya mga 14 kilometers yung isang barangay, sa mga pilapit ka, dadaan. At pagdating ko po doon sa bahay, sabi ko, ah, gusto niyo po bang gawin natin Holy Spirit Paris, parokya ng Espiritu Santo, ang ating parokya, bagong parokya. Ang tanong sa akin ng mga tao ay, Father, ano po ang istatwa ng Espiritu Santo? <laughs> Wala ako may sagot, hindi naman kalapati, hindi naman na uh, ako eh, o hindi naman tubig, bukal lang tubig, wala akong masabi. And finally, Sabi ko, kay Archbishop de Gaspi, ang hirap po yata ng Espiritu Santo pari. Hindi ba imagine ng tao yung Espiritu Santo? So we ended up calling the Paris Santo Nino. <laughs> Kasi mas nakikita uh, ng tao yung Santo Nino. But my point is, when Agentes speaks about the Holy Spirit, even for us, this might be something difficult to understand, the agency of the Holy Spirit in the mission of the church. But I just this explains. And also Pope Francis highlights the agency of the Holy Spirit in mission, in doing our mission. Pope Francis says, the Holy Spirit is the only one able to renew, revive, and give impetus to the church. In fact, they say without the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ is a man of the past. Without the Holy Spirit, the gospel is a dead letter. Without the Holy Spirit, the church is simply an organization. Without the Holy Spirit, hierarchy is only power and domination. And without the Holy Spirit, there is no renewal in the church. So, I believe the Pope uh, highlights this in relation to agendas, that the power of the Holy Spirit continues to make us truly living instruments of mission in the world and in the church today. So, agendas, first of all, highlights a missionary's way of life. Ano ba yung way of life ng missionary? Agendas 24 says, 
It is a life inspired and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Second, it is a life of self-emptying or kenosis, according to Philippians 2 verse 7. It is also a life of total surrender in existential obedience to the mandate of the Lord. And it is an evangelical life project that gives witness to Christ through suffering, kindness, disinterested love, and even martyrdom. Are you ready to be martyrs? We are ready to be martyrs? Virgin <laughs> But I tell you one experience. The life of a missionary is difficult. In the Archdiocese of Caceres, we have a program already for 18 years. We sent out priests to different mission territories. At the beginning, Archbishop Ligaspi did not have happy memory did not want to send priests to North America. Sabi niya, hindi naman mission yun eh. More recreation. <laughs> Going to America, niya, sabi niya. But uh, for 17 years, uh, today is the eight, this year's 18th year, we, have, we sent out priests uh, in 1996. We decided to have uh, a program for part of the ongoing formation for priests to go to mission territories outside the Philippines. And we have now priests working in Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Taiwan, Townsville, Australia, Jamaica, Montego Bay. We have around 32 priests outside the diocese doing mission work all over the world, including Canada also and uh, New Zealand and also America. But one of our priests, who was assigned to Solomon Islands, shared this, his life as a missionary. He was assigned to a remote island parish in the Diocese of Giso in Solomon Islands. He had 14 villages that could only be reached by boat. No, there were no lands, all islands. And he said there was no electricity, no uh, signal for telephone and he was alone <laughs> in the island. And he said for three years that he was there, it was the most difficult time of his life as a priest. But he understood this a life of total surrender in existential obedience. And he said, I, I was there on many occasions. My great struggle was loneliness. I was so lonely. And you know what happened to him to save his sanity and probably his life as a priest? He started cutting the hair of all the children and people in the village. So he became the barber of the village. And so when he came back home, his hair was very long because no one dared to cut his hair because he was the barber of the village. And he learned also Naging tailor din po siya. Nagtahi na siya kasi wala na siyang uh, yung loneliness niya ay eh, natuto siyang magtahi. Kaya yung yung uh, damit ng mga altar boys siya ang nagtahi. Pero hindi siya marunong ng mahabang sotana ang nagawa niya, palda at blusa. Yan <laughs> 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 ang nagawa niya para sa kanyang mga sa Christian. Then he also learned carpentry. Yung podium, yung lahat. Nagawa niya doon. But he said, this is one of the toughest times I had as a priest, but at the same time, the most beautiful and liberating experience in that particular God-forsaken island in Solomon Islands. But I tell you that this is, I think, the challenge of the missionary's way of life, according to Agendas, that it is a life of total surrender to God. Uh, let's proceed, and I think I have... Therefore, the way of life indicated by Algentis is that being with Christ is essential before being sent. Being with Christ is essential before being sent. Therefore, our personal relationship with the Lord is the foundation of our proclamation. Not only in words, but also in deeds. So let's go to According to Agenda 36, the first
first and most important obligation for the spread of faith is to lead a profoundly Christian life at the service of God and charity to our others. So ito po a challenge of witnessing po ito sa buhay natin. Let's go to the specific mandate. So dadaanan lang po natin but we will give a special attention to the Yosasan priest and we'll go to the last part and we will talk. According to Agenges, Mission, our participation in the vision of the Trinity, is carried out in one state of life. Therefore, the missionary mandate is carried out in one state of life. So let's begin with the laity. What does Agentes say about the mission of the laity? Agentes says that in Agentes 21, the laity are called to bear to Christ of their life and works in the home, social milieu, and professional circle. So in this sense, uh, we want to resonate with Iglesia in Asia. Iglesia in Asia says that the laity are called to evangelize the worlds of the world. The world of politics, the world of media, the world of entertainment, the world of education. They're all called to enter, to be a leaven in these worlds of the world. <clears throat> and to be a leaven from within the temporal order by bringing the gospel into the life of each society. Upcoming election na po tayo, di ko alam if we are really inculcated in our Catholic laymen and women what is truly politics. An Italian parliamentarian, Egidio Giordani, said something beautiful. He said, politics could be a strainer to hell or a jumping board to heaven. So, uh, I am not sure how it will be like for our politicians, uh, especially as we prepare for the upcoming election. But we have a lot to do also uh, in trying to tell our lay people of their mission in the renewal of our society according to the mind of Agendas. According to Agendas 21, and this is important for us priests, the church has not been really founded and is not yet fully alive without the laity working with hierarchy. During the National Mission Conference, a man stood out because one of the speakers said, the laity collaborates with the hierarchy in the mission of the church. He said, I do not think so. We are not simply collaborators. We are co-responsible for the mission of the church. And that is actually indicated by Pope Benedict XVI. He said that the laity are co-responsible with us priests, the hierarchy and the bishop, in the mission of the church. They are not simply there to pay, to pray, and to obey. They are also co-responsible with us, especially in the sense of being a leaven in our society. So I think this is important. Sabi niya ni Cardinal Tagle, ang iba kasing mga laity ay, they want to be mini priests. It should not be the case. It's not their charisma. So, uh, ito yung challenge that they understand their core responsibility in the life of the church. According to Agentes 23, the gospel cannot be deeply grounded in the abilities, life, and work of any people without the active presence of laymen and women. So, ito po yung challenge din sa atin, to cultivate our laymen and women. Let's go to the next. According to Agentes, the role of the family is also very important. The family is the seedbed of missionary vocation, according to Agentes number 9. And therefore, Christian life, we know if we take seriously the family, is experienced and nurtured in the family. What about catechists? Agentes says, Catechists are not only teachers of doctrine in the schools and parishes, they are missionaries, Agenda 17. 
That's why we have the Mystio Canonica of the Catechists. They are set out publicly because they are not only teachers, like any other teacher, but they are also missionaries, according to Agenda 17. Let's go to religious men and women. This year, in the Universal Church, we are celebrating the year of the consecrated life, and the theme is Wake Up the World. And in fact, they will have a big meeting here in the Philippines. Uh, the secretary of the uh, Congregation for the Institutes of Consecrated Life will come to the Philippines. What is the mission of, the specific mission of the, uh, the religious? Uh, Agentes highlights that there is a need to recognize and respect the diversity of charisms in consecrated and apostolic life. Ay, yung mga madre nga, talaga ang dami. Iba-iba. I have a student ngayon sa Divine World Institute of Mission Studies. Lu, ang kanilang habit, ang isinorten yung kanilang pangalan ng congregation, SMDC. <laughs> Para sila. Sabi ko, sister agents, baka yun ang SM <laughs> Development Corporation. So, ang dami-dami, di mo na maalala lahat ng mga congregations talaga. But it also shows that Agentes highlights the diversity of charisms in the church, like blue sister, pink sister, yellow sister, and many others. That was where the brothers and everything. So that they enrich the life of the church. And then, according to Agentes, ang mission talaga ng religious ay total availability for the kingdom of God by leaving certain ministries to others does enable them to use their forces for missionary activity. So, the last thing that a religious man at the Institutes of Consecrated Life would like to do is to be in the parish. That's the last thing that they should have to do because they should be totally available for the needs of the church in all situations of life. Therefore, according to Agendas, the evangelization of the world is the major role of religious men and women. Now let's go to us, diocesan priests. What does Agentes say about our mission as diocesan priests? Agentes 39 says, All diocesan priests are consecrated to the mission of the church. We are not simply ordained to be parish administrators. We have a bigger responsibility, and it is the mission of the church. We are consecrated to the service of the mission of the church. When I was a student at the Divine Word School of Theology, we had a mission theology, mission missiology courses. And some of us were complaining to Father Hino Nicasio at that time. The complaining said, why do we study missiology? We will not be missionaries. But then, going back to agendas, we understood that yes, we are not going probably to mission territories outside the Philippines. But my priesthood is essentially missionary. Pope Benedict wrote, an important contribution to this when he says that the Yosisan priesthood is essentially missionary. So I think it is a constant challenge, a reminder for all of us to go back to Agendas 39. And the implication of this to our life as the Yosisan priest is very important and tremendous because the second point is that they should fully understand that their life is also consecrated for the mission. For the mission. And the one concrete implication is that the U.S. priests need to have the zeal for the evangelization of the world. And how do we live this according to Agentes? Ito. Agentes, number 20. We can remember this exhorts the diocesan priest to generously volunteer for ministry in distant and forsaken areas of one's diocese. Mahirap. 
In a recent conference we had in Rome last April, Cardinal Tagli was invited on the occasion of the 50 years of Agentes. There was an international conference at the Vatican, and one of the speakers was Cardinal Tagli. I had the grace to participate there. He said something like this. In reference to Agentes 20, he said, as bishops, he was referring to himself. Because he was talking about mission of bishops and priests. And Cardinal Tagli, if I were to rephrase what he said, di ko maintindi bakit ang ibang pare ay hirap na hirap mag-let go ng assignment. Okay? Ito sabi niya po ito. Ay, hindi ko po ito. <laughs> sabi niya, let go. At sabi niya, on many occasions, when you want to assign a priest to a parish lesser than the parish that he was assigned to before his new assignment, sasabi niya, Bishop, may sakit na po ako. Masakit na po yung balakang ko. Masakit na po yung tuhod ko. May diabetes na po ako. At uh, etc. Totoo naman po siguro, sabi ni sa aking palagay na. But I think the point ni Cardinal Tamer when he was referring to this is that the life of a priest is fulfilled not in the assignment, not in the place where you assign, but only in God who sends you as a priest. Because assignments will come and go. But if my life is not rooted in the one who sends me, my assignment in the parish becomes a succession of work, not really a participation in the mission of Jesus Christ. So ito po yung uh, paalala na my life as a priest is only fulfilled in God, not in whatever assignment I have. So, it's an examination of conscience for me when Cardinal Tagli was sharing this. No? And obviously, we have many reasons. Actually, sinabi niya pa, dahil ba mas marami kang makukuhang benefits doon sa parish na yun? O may iba pang dahilan? So, ito po yung, uh, I think this is a good point for us to reflect as they are. Yung, First expression ng ating missionary dimension of our priesthood is to go wherever God sends us through the bishop, of course. But we can also say our opinion, but ultimately, whatever, what really matters is where God sends us. I just tell you, Father, if I could wrap up, how many minutes do I have? Ten minutes, probably five minutes. Therefore, all pastoral activities need to have a missionary motivation in the direction. Ito po yung paalala sa But about, and therefore, the diocesan priests can offer themselves as volunteers to go to mission territories that are lacking in clergy. So we can volunteer to go anywhere. No? I don't know if the Diocese of San Pablo have a program that sends out priests as missionaries to other territories. That would be a wonderful thing to explore. And I tell you, it could be a wonderful adventure for the Yossesan priests. Let's go to the bishops. What about the bishops? Are they missionaries? Okay. Bishop Ben is there. So, when they lost the... Uh, when they had the media seminar at the CBC event. Now, according to Agentes, all bishops are consecrated not just for one diocese, but for the salvation of the whole world. Uh, some bishops were saying, this is not about airport bishops who are always out of the diocese. But it's about the bishops are concerned for the renewal, the evangelization of the whole church. Therefore, the intrinsic missionary nature of Episcopacy implies that bishops need to stimulate, they need to promote, they need to coordinate. They need to direct. 
the mission work in the local church that's making the whole diocese mission. So, if ever I obey the bishop, it is because I participate in also the mission of the bishop for the salvation of the whole world. Sometimes I do not understand immediately the assignment given to me by my bishop. For example, when Archbishop Legaspi uh, sent me to uh, a parish, uh, I was complaining because uh, I wanted another assignment. Humanly speaking, I wanted another assignment. But when I went there, I understood later on why I was sent there. So, first, maybe first of all, I do not understand totally why I have been sent there. But in the obedience of the bishop, I am given the chance to understand this. Therefore, a bishop serves as a center of unity with sales for the name in fostering and preserving missionary work in the church. Therefore, all bishops are hellers of faith. They should have the passion of leading new disciples to Christ. And also the promotion of the pontifical mission societies is also issues within the competence of the bishop. Now let's, uh, I'm, I'm wrapping up. Therefore all agents of mission in their diversity of gifts and status of life have to work together all these agents of mission in the church in a different status of life. We speak, Agenda speaks of a mosaic of gifts for the mission of the church, which is called mission cooperation. All must have to work together in apostolic synergy for the mission of the church. Taking into account opportunity, ability, charisms, and ministry. And the implications are, mission is first of all, a life of witness to Christ in all states of life. Second, missionary activity of the church flows from the missionary identity of its Christian. And the missionary nature of the episcopacy and priesthood challenges bishops and priests go to go beyond comfort zones and specific interests. And bishops and priests need to overcome maintenance status mentality and acquire missionary joy. And I'm concluding with what Pope ben, uh, Francis said about the missionary joy to our lives as priests. Priestly joy is deeply bound up with God's holy and faithful people. For it is eminently missionary joy. And when the Pope speaks of missionary joy, is he gave this during the Christian Mass last year. He said, what is a missionary joy in the life of a diocesan priest or for, of any priest for that matter? It is a joy which anoints us, not greases us, not making us unctuous, sumptuous, and presumptuous. But it is a missionary joy which spreads and attracts, starting backwards, with those farthest away from us. What a challenge for us as priests today to have that missionary joy in our life as a priest. So just one final word. Mission for us priests and for the church means newness of life. And it is nourished daily by the Word, by the Eucharist, and by the love of neighbor. Thus we can say that in whatever we do as priests, every neighbor that God places beside me in the present moment of my life is my mission space. Every neighbor that God places beside me in the present moment of my life is my mission space. Thank you.